I never been to Estonia before, but I read a lot about Estonia and your uh, history. And it's very interesting to meet you now and talk about pedagogics and school development and the culture, the role of culture in and creativity in the classroom for the children and the children's rights to all their languages, not only speaking language or writing language, all the aesthetic languages. This is a kind of a card for a, a ba my background. I started as a child, as a composer and a child artist in Sweden. Uh, I wrote songs from eight years old and, and I ended my career as a, an artist at, as, at 19 years old. I made uh, several records as a kid. My first song, it was like this. Nu skiner stjärnorna, det är sju på himlens mörka rund. Du, 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 du. That was the beginning of this song. And when I told my friend, my, uh, uh, I played with her all the time at home and in school, Yvonne she was called, and she said, oh, I've done a song too. It's like this, come, come. Jag har kommit hem, kom, 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 så är du snäll. Mamma sa att det var inget att vara rädd för. Är det alldeles sant? Eller är det så att hon har ljugit för mig? Vad tror du, vad tror du, vad tror du? What a song. And several verses. And there was I with, nu skiner stjärnor. I wanted to compose songs like her. So we were competing. Who could uh, make the best song? And we were writing down the uh, words on paper and hiding them for all the adults. No one knew what we were going to do. And we went to school. In school I had an uh, organ. It didn't swing at all in school. My teacher were uh, pressing and, and playing at the same time, you know, all the uh, church songs and everything. I was looking for the swinging school. It didn't swing. So uh, all my composing was a secret for everyone. And suddenly, when I was 10 years, I met a jazz musician in school. He was a music teacher, but he had no education. Oh yes, he had education. He could play. Jazz and rock and, you know, when Beatles came to Europe, to us all in the 60s, he, he wrote down the Beatles songs and we sang it and he played the piano. I wanted to play the piano exactly like him. So I started to play and make songs and after, when I was 11, I made my first record with my own songs. So my history is... Uh, a history of, of uh, being aware of the child's own creativity and how the school and the music school and the school system provides the, cre the real creativity for the child. Later on I, I started to uh, uh, educate myself in arithmetics so this after lunch, we're going to ha have music and movement and modern music. So that's my uh, basic uh, profession, I think. But uh, I've done it for 30 years, but now I I'm writing books. I'm, I'm a kind of researcher and I work as a developer for communes and schools in Sweden who want to um, change education and uh, how to educate children in the classroom. So I brought some books that I wrote and now, uh, pre uh, now this summer my blue book over there is quite new and it's about reflecting in classroom. I'm going to have a, a lot of discussion Kring, about reflection today. And uh, 
I have a picture of myself when I was small. I didn't, I, I did dance too. And this is a picture which I called obeying creativity. Can you understand that? It's creativity, it's a beautiful picture, but someone is taking my hand like this and then I know I'm going to do like this. So it's a kind of pedagogy that's uh, in a very uh, uh, authoritative tradition dance. You know, you have to do like this and this and this and this and this. But where is the creativity in the child? This was after an evening with the, all the uh, parents as a uh, uh, public. And uh, we had danced, all the children had danced, and I was outside the stage waiting, going in to have the applause. And then took my teacher, me in my hand, and he took me out on the stage. And he didn't tell me to do this. And he shaked my hand and I, I did this. And then he continued to uh, improvise dancing with me. And I don't remember if there was any kind of music or anything. I just felt very stupid. Why is he doing this to me? He has looked through me. No one else would agree to do such a thing like this. What shall I do now? And suddenly he came back and made this. I'm afraid of heights, heights, yes. Can you see this? This is a posi position where the dancer is going to lie down like this and look at the audience. But I'm totally scared. Because when he lifts you down, then you will have this. Ooh, ooh. So this was a moment of horror for me. Can you discuss together, two and two or three of three, the, the concept of the obeying creativity? Have you an experience of this? Talk to each other, reflect. I'll have some water. Okay, I'm sorry to interrupt you. And you soon know why I am sorry to interrupt you, because when you are reflecting, then you are learning. So I'm sorry to interrupt. Now I'm going to connect this uh, concept of the obeying creativity uh, together with uh, how we learn and research about how we learn this school we all know, and this school I can see in Sweden also, uh, teaching with, uh, within two poles, perception, sitting like you now, listening to me, looking at me, but I don't know what you're thinking. But you're looking at me, I can see that. And someone is writing, yes, 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 yes. And then you keep this, what you hear and what you think. If you have time to think about what I'm saying, you keep it during the night. And after this, you put it out. You answer the right question, and you get high grades in school. You read a lot the evening before. You have a homework to do a lot. And if you are a good sleeper and a good reader, you can keep it during the night and have high, degree, high grades the next day. But research shows us that you can have high grades but not remember anything. 
So high grades, uh, good results in school, is not the same that having a, a true knowledge that you combine to other subjects. So this mechanically way to, to teach, make some um, look or uh, gaps in the children's uh, knowledge uh, uh, bagage. Do you understand me? Yes. So if you teach like this, read, produce, get a, a result, then you make you yourself make the difficulties for the children to really learn. And today I'm going to talk that we are, in Sweden we are moving from teaching to the concept of learning. So in our curriculum we don't have teaching in that sense anymore. We are now talk, talking about learning and learning processes. And this is where the creativity and where democracy and the children's own experience come in. So the teachers which I train in Sweden who are going to develop their teaching, they must prepare something to percept, but then train their pupils to reflect. And this is a very big challenge. This is a revolution for teaching. And it's so fun to teach like this. Because you have to prepare something very good and not so long instruction for the children. But doing like me now, putting it like a ball into the class and have every pupil to reflect on this. Not giving their hand up in the air, then you can o only have two or three opinions and it takes too much long time from the lesson. I teach my ch uh, uh, teachers to uh, prepare some instruction and work two and two together to reflect. And you immediately get delaktighet, um, uh, what do you say, uh, work together. And everyone is working immediately together in the classroom. And the challenge is on how many ways can you reflect? And in the Swedish new curriculum since two years, we have aesthetic perspectives in all subjects in school. So if you study chemistry or biology or geography or English or maths, you have to teach within, uh, with, together with the aesthetic languages. Film, photo, drawing, music, theater, and so on. So the aesthetics is a way in the education to reflect what you're going to learn. And then you learn furthermore because you can have more um, tools in your classroom. Now I will be quiet because now you're going to reflect. I'm sorry to interrupt. The teacher often interrupt learning. The teacher often interrupt learning. Because now, what you are doing when you are reflecting, you are using your own experience together with a new input. And that's learning. And the next step in a reflective way of teaching is to ask what did you talk about and make a big mind map from all of you and you can fill a whole wall with the reflections of the children in the classroom and this you can do also when they have uh, make, made a drawing or when they dance something 
I'm an arrhythmic teacher and I work with all the metrics in music. One, two, three. It's not the same as one, two, three, four. Many children discover the, the difference between figures by doing them and seeing them and using them in different temples together with other people. So understanding maths, if you have problem, problem with understanding maths, you must do mathematics in different kind of dimensions. To, because mathematics is an aesthetic area, absolutely. And it's very difficult to uh, teach by reflecting because you, ha you will have so many different kind of answers and interesting answers because you have to deal with all the experience of your children. And like the headmaster, the woman who sat here, the children have a lot of experience, but they need to be so quiet in school. I don't know how it is in Estonia. But a learning classroom is never quiet. When I look at teaching, I see teachers talk and talk and talk. The teachers learn a lot in school because they talk a lot. Teachers uh, gestalt uh, for uh, gestalt. Uh, Va? Teacher creates their, and develop their own thinking by talking and making instructions and everything. But it's the children who must talk a lot to develop language and talking. And if you're going to build a de democratic world here in Estonia, you must train all your pupils to reflect and have their own opinion and to learn their own experience and express it, then you will have a good democratic classroom. Talk to each other. Is this a challenge for you? Take a look at this uh, newborn baby. He, this little boy is 40 minutes old and he, has, he is looking at his father who is uh, making like this. And then he, he turns his head away and says, don't stop, no more input. I'm just 40 minutes old, you know. Oh, you have a mouth and you can make like this. Okay, look, he's focusing, and then he is. Look at this, perception, reflection, focusing, producing. And you do, we all do this when we learn. We percept. We need to reflect. Stop, stop, not more. This conference is full of poof. We need to reflect. And then you produce something new when you come home. Okay? So all these languages, Swedish teachers has to, has to improve and include in their education. And that's a challenge. Not everyone does. But many schools and many communes in Sweden are trying to develop aesthetic learning processes. Because we have a curriculum now that says that every subject should have an aesthetic perspective. And now I'm going to talk about aesthetics as a pedagogic concept. You know, if you read in a uh, dictionary, you can find uh, aesthetic as uh, learning about the beauty and subtlety. It's a kind of, uh, in art, about uh, high quality. But in pedagogics, we have this subject 
this concept as a pedagogical concept, and we are talking about uh, giving place for experience. This picture is a, is a picture of a theory from a, a Danish researcher, Kirsten Drottner, and she means that we need to have a bridge between our inner consciousness and our person outside. So we need to discover ourselves and to express it out in the society and then there is art. So if you're always um, producing art that someone else ha had done or that you already can read about, then it's no art. To create, you must find yourself in a situation where you can use your own experience and develop th thinking. Then you, then there is creativity, true creativity. So in school, children must have many possibilities, many tools, many opportunities to discover themselves by talking, by writing, by dancing, by making music, by understanding how a car can work, by examining and photoing and building three dim dimensions or anything to understand what you read. Because when you read, the researcher says, you, when you read, you use very little competence in your brain. You need to widen the work in the brain. So, I'm just going to finish soon. But uh, when you learn to read and write, the researchers uh, talk about mul uh, mu multimodality, many ways to express you. Because if you have competence in one area, in singing, you can translate it into reading, or into listening, or into writing, if you have the opportunity. So it is the teachers and the schools who can make limits for children, or who can widen up and open up the possibilities to have many languages to communicate in the modern society and in a modern democratic society. This was a very, very short lecture, but I'm so glad that I could come here and talk about this and make some problems in your head now. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Ulla, thank you very much for thank speaking you. to us. Thank you. It's a little token for appreciation from thank us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.